Now that we've looked at some examples and sort of discussed generally the, the concept of a limit, the meaning of a limit, uh, it's time to actually look at a definition and, and move forward to some techniques for computing limits um, so that we don't have to always look at graphs or table of values and rely on guesswork to figure out what's going on. So um, here is a, an informal definition. We're going to have to fix this, um, but we can start with this informal definition. Um, so we start with a function defined on some interval. Uh, we need an interval because, again, we, we want to be able to look at values of f of x on either side of this point c. And we want to be able to look at x values as close to c as we want, right? Um, so we need to make sure that our function is defined in the region where we want to consider it. Um, but we don't necessarily require that our function be defined at c itself. We've seen some examples where that wasn't the case, and we've seen that it's not necessary, right? We want f to be defined near c, but not necessarily at c, OK? So what does it mean to say that the limit of our function as x approaches c is this value l, um, which again, we use this notation. We've seen this already. Um, so one way to say say this is to say, well, you can make f of x arbitrarily close to L as long as you choose your x value sufficiently close, um, again, but not equal, to C. Right? And one of the things that you'll notice is the, uh, the occurrence twice here of this word close, right? arbitrarily close, sufficiently close. And you might reasonably wonder, what, what do we mean by close, right? Because um, these, these are not precise words, right? Arbitrarily close, sufficiently close. These are weasel words. We're trying to get out of, of telling you exactly what's going on. Um, but one of the reasons that we, that we resort to this imprecise language is that a a precise definition of the limit, it's, it's harder to pin down than you might think, right? Um, in fact, calculus was, was already more than a century old, more, centuries old, in fact, um, before a rigorous definition of the limit was, was developed, right? A rigorous limit definition didn't appear until the 19th century. Um, but calculus, of course, dates all the way back to, to Newton and to Leibniz, um, right, in the 17th century. Uh, so, so in one sense, not having a rigorous definition of a limit, it doesn't necessarily hold you back from, from moving the subject forward, from using it uh, to come up with the results that are useful in the sciences, in, in physics, in astronomy, um, were probably the areas where people were initially most interested in applying calculus. Uh, nonetheless, uh, you can make this precise. You can put everything on a, on a sound, rigorous footing, right? Um, and, and there was some motivation to do so. There were, were early critics of calculus um, who pointed out that, you know, this, this limit definition was, was never really well founded, right? When you're looking at these difference quotients, you're looking at derivatives, you know, you're, you're trying to have things two ways, it seems, right? You're, on the one hand, you're saying that h isn't zero because you want to divide by it. On the other hand, you're saying, oh, but, you know, uh, I want h to go to 0 because I'm interested in what happens when h goes to 0. So you say, you know, it's not 0 until I want it to be, and then it's 0, which, which see, it seems like you're cheating, right? So a rigorous definition of the limit will, will put this on more solid foundation and let you understand what's going on, right? Understand what do you mean by close. And you can get a little bit of an idea of, of where this is headed by, by looking at the graph, right? And saying, okay, well... I want to be arbitrarily close to L, right? So that means that you can tell me how far apart you want things to be. You can choose a particular degree of closeness. And, and I've got to make sure that I can get my function, you know, that close. So close here sort of means, you know, some distance away from L. And again, that distance could be one side or the other. So, so maybe we say, well, I want, I want to be in this, in this range here, right? F of X has to land somewhere in there. Well, it's easy enough to kind of look at the graph and follow things across and look at where those y values hit the graph.
drop them down, and you get a corresponding range for the x values, right? So if I want my, my y values, if I want f of x to be in this range here, on either side of the limit L, then I need to make sure that my x values come from this little range here, this little interval around C, right? Um, and this is exactly the game that we're going to play when we, when we move to the formal definition of, of the limit. Um, we're going to quantify exactly what we mean by close, and we're going to quantify the, the size of these intervals around both the limiting value and the x value. Um, that's going to be the next video.